Good evening, everyone. This is May 2020, Unit 1 of IEL Physics. And this was the same exam conducted in October because the May June exam was switched to October, November, and May June it was assessment. Uh, the first question uh, which of the following unit only used for vector quantity? So joule is only for scalar, meter, it can be scalar, like it can be distance or displacement or vector. Newton is always a vector and watt, which is a unit of power is scalar. So which can only be used for vector quantity. Newton can only be used for vector quantity. A box was placed at the top of a ramp and is released. A free body force diagram for the box as it moved down the ramp at a constant velocity is shown. Which two forces acting on the box have according to third law corresponding force acting on the ramp. So corresponding force on the ramp, so how we can work out the so weight which is acting downward, this weight will have two components. The one which is with an angle that, that is W cos theta and against the angle will be W sin theta. So W cos theta which is perpendicular to the surface, the inclined surface and W sin theta which is acting along the surface that is balances with F and W cos theta balances with R so which create a Newton third pair force so W sin theta balances with F and W cos theta balances with R that's why B is a right answer for this. The diagram shows a roller coaster a car stop moving momentarily at P before descent to Q. Uh, which of the following expression could be used? So we know the change in the potential energy is equals to kinetic energy. At point P, we call that as potential energy 1. And point Q, we call that as potential energy 2. So potential energy 1 minus potential energy 2, that is equals to kinetic energy. And potential energy is MgH1 here, MgH2 is equals to kinetic energy which is half mv square m is common in all the expressions so we can cancel out so it will be gh1 minus gh2 is equals to half v square so g is a gravity h1 that is 75 so 75 g minus h2 is 30 and g is equals to half v square for 75 minus 30 that's equal to 45 g equals to half v square or 90 g is equals to v square or square root or under root of 90 g that will be equal to v. So d is the right answer for this. A car travel north with a velocity of 50 meter per second and then it slow down. So it is decelerating but it does not change the direction as you can see plus and plus so it shows that it does not change the direction. So it is plus 50 and plus 20. What is the change in the velocity? It is final minus initial. So final is 20 minus initial is 50. So that will be equal to minus 30 meter per second. If there was a change in direction, then we will use a different sign for representing these velocities. In the Two forces P and Q act on the object. So for this, we can use a parallelogram method. If you use a parallelogram method, we'll consider the two vectors as a side of the parallelogram and the diagonal will be the resultant. And if we consider them as a side of the triangle, so first we'll draw the first, like vector P, then we draw the vector Q and from tail of the first to the head of the last, that will be the resultant vector so in this case the resultant vector r will be there so we have to check which one it matches with the option if we use a parallelogram or a triangle method resultant will not change so here resultant direction is given wrong opposite in this one that you can see that resultant should be the diagonal the intersection of the two vectors the starting point so its, it's direction should be in this way so that's why c is also wrong so correct answer is d A lamp has an efficiency of 0.68. So it is an efficiency is given in decimal and the useful energy is 120. So formula for efficiency is equals to useful 
energy output divided by total energy input times 100. But because it's 0 0.68, so what does it mean? It, it is given percentage. It's actually converted into decimal, so it is useful divided by input. So n divided by 100 is given 0 0.68. This is 120 and input is x, so x will be 120 divided by 0 0.68. So right answer is D. A student used a falling sphere to determine the acceleration of a free fall was released. The sphere was released from rest. Which two quantities required the fewest measurement to be taken in order to get the value of the gravity? So to calculate the velocity, because velocity you cannot calculate directly, it is displacement over time. And normally time interval is used. So for whenever you want to measure velocity, it's not like directly you have to first measure displacement or distance and then the time interval and distance displacement divided by time will give you the velocity. But for B, option B, displacement, you just have to measure a difference between the two points and the time you can measure by a stop first. So directly you can work out the acceleration due to gravity. So if the other, why other options are not correct? Because we are finding the velocity and velocity directly we don't find. We have to first calculate displacement and time. And from that displacement time, we will calculate the velocity. First, we have to measure displacement time. And from measurement, we have to calculate the velocity. A stress applied across the end of a wire having a cross-sectional area A, the work done to extend the wire is del by delta X. Which of the following could be used? Because when we are doing a work done, if it is stress over strain graph, so area under the graph will give us the work, the energy density or work done per unit volume. And if it is a force and extension graph, so force and extension graph, the area under the graph will give us the work done because Newton meter. So basically we have to just check which, which one answer the units are in Newton meter. And so work done is equals to force into distance, so distance, but why half? Because this force is not a constant force. You will take an average force as the co force is continuously increased when we are stretching an object. So this will be average force. Like it is from like, if I say I applied a force of two Newton, but it's not like exactly two Newton, it is started with zero and maximum value is two Newton. So we substitute the average force. And we know the force because sigma stress is equals to force over area. So force is equals to sigma times area. So we can write in place of force, we can write stress into area and the display, the work, the distance move that is delta X. So this will be delta X. So sigma A into delta X. So it matches with option C. Velocity time graph for a motion of a ball is shown. Which of the following describe, correctly describe the motion? So first velocity is increasing. A ball is dropped and rebound to original position. The ball is dropped. That's right because when object is dropped, it will accelerate and its velocity will increase. So velocity is increasing. The so ball is dropped. So either A will be answer or B. But it rebound to an original position or lower position. That depends on when it hits the surface with what velocity it bounces back. So you can see the positive velocity was higher, means it it hit with a higher velocity, but when it changes the direction, the velocity decreases because it is less negative. So if it is less negative, it will not rebound to a same height, it will rebound to a lower position. So B is the right answer. Which of the following graphs of displacement against the time could be represent the motion of the ball? So if we plot a velocity from velocity time we need a displacement time so first for a displacement time graph 
the slope represent velocity so what is happening to velocity velocity is increasing it means first what should happen the first part the slope should increase so we should have a graph in which the slope is increasing and what about the value of the slope because when you take y1 when you take y1 and y2 so y2 is above y1 it means the value of the slope should be positive so slope increase and it should have a positive value so slope increase and a positive value so the graph will be like this and then what happen velocity is maximum and then it start to decrease so slope should it decrease and what about the value of the slope this is y1 for the second part and y2 so slope is the velocity is negative here as you can see the negative value so slope should be negative and slope should be negative as well as it's it should decrease so which displacement time graph the slope is negative and decreasing so when we check the displacement time graph when i take y1 and y2 b and d cannot be an answer because it shows slow initial slope is constant it shows velocity is constant so it can be a or it can be c so the correct answer because y y2 is y1 is above y2 so it's a negative slope so c is the right answer so this was june 2020 unit 1 mcqs uh, next session i will discuss questions more question related to this paper